students welcome back for the online sessions of the material science and metallurgy myself vivek pare and we are discussing about the chapter name that is known as a heat treatment of the steels so till now we have seen the different types of the heat treatment methods which we are going to conduct in the lectures and out of that thing we have studied all the different types of the annealing methods we have also gone through the things that is your ttt diagram and cct diagram so now moving forward for that heat treatment processes in the bulk region we are having four methods annealing normalizing hardening tempering we have studied the annealing method so now we will be going forward to discuss about the method that is known as a normalizing method so now let us start that is the thing that is the normalizing what do you mean by the normalizing method it is similar to the full annealing method it is same as the full annealing except that the steel is generally cooled in the atmosphere what is the major difference between annealing and normalizing in an annealing we are going for the cooling in the furnace whereas in the normalizing method which we are going for the cooling inside the atmosphere what will happen if you are going for the furnace cooling the structure which you get that is about the coarser structure we are getting but in the normalizing what we will be getting we will get about the structure that is known as a finer perlite means the perlitic range what we are having that is the finer portion of the perlite we are having okay so now what is the method how we are the steps which we are going to follow so here let us start the thing in the normalizing which contains the heating of the material about 40 to 55 degree above critical temperature critical temperature is somewhat around the 910 degree celsius and holding it for the proper amount of time and then cooling still in the air or slightly agitated air to the room temperature that means a general cooling is to be done a general room temperature cooling if you go whatever the method you have performed that method is known as an normalizing method in some special cases the cooling rate can be controlled by the air temperature or the air volume so if you want to go somewhat slower than the furnace cooling you sorry somewhat slower than the atmospheric cooling and faster than the furnace cooling then what we will be doing we will be controlling the atmosphere but after normalizing the microstructure should be perlite as i told you but which perlite finer perlite we will be getting annealing we will get coarser perlite since temperature involved in this process is more in the that of the annealing so what will happen the homogeneity means the structure of the same region will be more as compared to the thing so what will happen the ferrite and the cement and structure will disappear and as a result of which we will get the structure that is the finer perlitic structure we will be getting it easily in the normalizing method now in the normalizing method results in the better dispersion of the ferrite and cementite dispersion in the ferrite and cementite in the final structure the grain size which we are getting see here they have written that it is the finer microstructure we will be obtaining the steels are generally stronger and harder than the annealed steel we told that in the lectures previously we have studied that during the annealing the two properties were decreased drastically which were the two properties the two properties were hardness and strength that thing were decreased what was increased machine ability was increased ductility was increased softness softness was increased but in normalizing as the temperature is somewhat higher but the cooling is faster so what will happen they are the stronger and the harder type of the steels okay steels they are soft in annealing condition but as i told you they are harder in this condition normalizing is the effective way to eliminate the carbide network whatever the carbide carbon network is there it can be removed with the help of this normalizing method clear now we will be discussing which are the purpose of the normalizing method let us start with thing the first one the major thing which i told you to give or to produce the harder and the stronger steels than the annealing to improve machinability in any of the way the machinability is improved 
as compared to your original steel's machine ability. The third one which comes that is to modify the grain structure, the finer structure which we are getting that is because of the normalizing method. The fourth one that is to obtain the good ductility without reducing hardness and strength. But yes, ductility is lower than the ethylene but still as compared to the original property of the steel we will improve the ductility but without changing or without that much drastically decrement in your hardness and strength means by normalizing we will be have improving some of the ductility without compromising of our hardness and strength. It will also gives you the dimensional stability means in an atmosphere we are cooling so what will happen the material's dimension will not that much fluctuate. To produce the homogeneous microstructure, why? Because heating is somewhat more in normalizing as compared to your annealing method. So homogeneity will be more. To reduce the bending process and to provide the more consistent response for the hardening and case hardening method, we will be going for the normalizing method. Clear? So now, let us discuss what is the difference between this annealing and the normalizing method. We have discussed while studying normalizing that some of the differences between these two things. Less hardness, tensile strength and toughness. Whereas here you can go for the more hardness, tensile strength. This was the very first difference. That means the hardness and the strength they are always less in the annealing method as compared to your normalizing method. Whatever the cycle time it is much more. Why? Because cooling is done in the furnace. So the overall cycle time is very much more in this method. Whereas the cycle time is less because air cooling is done. So the time required for the whole process is less as compared to your annealing method. Perlite which we get that is of the coarser structure. Whereas in the normalizing perlitic structure that will be of the finer structure. Amount of perlite which we get that is less because cementite portion is somewhat more in the annealing. Whereas amount of perlite which we get that is more in the form of the normalizing way. More uniform grain structure. Why? Slow cooling is done. So the uniformity in the grain structure that is more uniform in annealing whereas less uniform grain structure is obtained in the normalizing. The residual stresses which are left, they are almost minimum or you can say null in the annealing. Whereas there are more residual stresses which are left inside the material after normalizing. No cracking or warping is observed, means no dimensional change or the cracking is observed. But if you are having a complex shape, then the cracks may develop inside the material. Clear by the normalizing method. So, this was your difference between your annealing and the normalizing method. Okay. So, let us move forward for our third method that is known as the hardening method. What is the hardening method? Now, let us discuss this thing. It is the process of heating the steel to a proper austenizing temperature, soaking the material to an appropriate temperature for a long time. And then what we are going, we are going for the faster cooling. We are going for the faster cooling than the critical rate. You are knowing this type of the C structure which is there in your TTT diagram. If this is the case, then you have to always pass your material through this thing. You should never cross this C mark. Okay, so that much how faster cooling we will be done. So what will happen as the time of cooling is very much rapid, there will be high hardness developed by this process. That means the whole material which we are using, that will be the hard material. Why? Because of the rapid cooling. Why? Because of the rapid cooling it is done. So what will happen? The transformation of austenite will be transformed into martensite structure. Why? Because we are going for the fast amount of cooling, faster cooling with the help of the water, oil. In this way we are going for the cooling and as a result what will happen? The material or the micro which we will be getting that will be of the martensitic structure. 
So now, what does this thing depend? It depends the this thing, the temperature of heating. It is dependent on the chemical composition. The plain carbon steel, if we are using, we will go for the 30 to 50 degree above upper critical temperature. And for the hyper eutectoid steel, we will be heating lower than the 30 to 50 degree of the critical temperature. Clear? So now, ferrite and perlite transforms to austenite when we are heating. But on the rapid quenching from the hardening, what we will be getting? We will be getting martensite structure. What we get? We get the martensitic structure. So hardening, it is also known as a very rapid process. Within no time, this process will get completed because we are going for the rapid cooling of the material. What is the purpose? Hardening, as the name suggests, the very first thing that is the hardened steel we are getting to resist wear. What is wear? Whenever, whenever you are having a component which is in a motion, due to the motion there is a wear generated to resist that wear, the removal of the metal. We are going for the hardening. Second one, enables steel to cut the other metal. For the cutting ability, high speed steel, you might be knowing the steels which are used to cut the different material for that thing we are using the hardening method. It improves the strength, toughness and ductility but develops the best combination of the strength. All the strengths which are there, they are very much developed in this type of the hardening treatmented steel. Which are the process variables? The first one, the temperature at which we are going to heat the material. Second one, the soaking time, how much time we are giving for conversion of that material. And the third one, the quenching medium, which we are using for the cooling purpose. So, these are the process variables which are there for the hardening method. Now, which are the quenching medium which we are using? The different quenching medium means how we are going to cool the material. So, the very first one that is the simple water which we are using. Second one, brine. Third one, oils. Different types of the oil at the different temperature keeping. We can use that oil as a quenching medium. The fourth one that is the polymer quenching that is the hydrocarbon type of the quenching medium we are using. The salt bath which we are using of the different types of the salt bath that is also used for the rapid type of the cooling of the material. So these are the different quenching mediums which we are using for the hardening method. Clear? So now let us see the graph of the material. Let us discuss it. What is the graph of this material? Okay. So how this graph will come into the consideration. So we are hitting the material over here you can see. Now what will be done over here you can see there will be an austenite will be there on the material. So the material will be converted into austenite phase. As I told you, you have to avoid this C line. You have to always avoid this C line. So we are going for the rapid cooling. So here what will happen, you can see. The thing will directly come down and will enter MS region. What is this MS region? Martensitic start. What is MF region? Martensitic finish. So due to the rapid cooling, what will happen? Time required will be less. What will be the time required? Time required will be less over here. You can see the time is less. So whenever it comes due to this thing, your material is transformed very rapidly and it enters the martensite drain and the martensite has a property known as the hardness. So by rapid cooling of the material, we are always going for this type of the method that is known as an hardening method. Clear? So this was your third method that is the hardening. So in this lecture we have discussed the three methods that is annealing, normalizing and hardening and three types of the bulk heat treatment methods we have discussed. The remaining fourth method tempering and its type we will be discussing in our upcoming lectures. Till then, thank you.